It's been another month, and this month has been quite interesting. As I've done a lot, not probably where you expect. So let me show you the changes that I've made since last month in my little game. Starting with, oh, would you look at that? This looks very different. We have a press any key. We have my logo here. Why do we have my logo here? Yeah, I, I just don't have a logo. So put my own there for now. Temporary, temporary. But we click and we get a new menu and everything. There's also now a version here. Here's the pre-alpha of October 2025. And I'll update this as we go. Obviously, the entire menu here is different, including the fact that we now have a really nice options menu. Check this this out different settings for pretty much everything if you are colorblind we got you covered change the gamma change the sharpness turn on v-sync limit your frames if you'd like you even have upscaling methods including fsr dlss and even intel's xcss you of course turn it all off by default is just tsr go nuts if you'd like currently the game is not optimized i'll be honest i haven't done any of that because it is way too early to start optimizing and the goal eventually is to have baked lighting not lumen lumen might be an option but it's not going to be mandatory and right now it's just in there as lumen so that's why it's going to be more expensive in terms of performance than it will be down the line it's just not of focus right now so that's where we have but you of course have all the normal settings under graphics here there is a run benchmark button but i could have sworn i disabled this i'm gonna need to double check that i disable this next time this doesn't actually i think fully work let's find out if i click run benchmark let's find out does it work yes it does so it works it's just not really set up to do much so there's the fps this obviously would need to be for the game itself so the actual setup for it is there we just need to kind of run it for the game to you know properly do its thing and i'll stop benchmark now you get a lot of information here average fps one percent lows 0.1 percent lows maximum fps all the good stuff so for now it works but it doesn't do much hardware ray tracing for lumen you could change your global illumina illumination your reflection quality all the good stuff shadow quality by default everything is on medium if i go ahead and change it to ultra we could just set everything to lumen ultra all automatically updates so we have all the nice graphics options of course you got to make sure to hit apply and you're good by the way if you notice here it says a and d if i go ahead and swap to a controller it will automatically as you see change the icons to a controller form so now it says left and right if we go to gameplay there's actually a section for gameplay icons so if you're using a different kinds of controller you can change the icons that you're seeing it doesn't actually change what you need to press it's just the look of the button basically so for example xbox playstation i believe this is the switch controller ones there's a few other options like screen shake the minimap you could turn off the minimap, turn on and off the enemies, and control the opacity of the minimap all in here. You could also turn on and off the health bars of enemies, as well as yourself. So if you'd like, you can have a green health bar above your player, and for example, red one above enemies. I'll go ahead and have the minimap on with, let's say, 50% opacity for the demonstration. Beyond that, there's now also a whole control section. And guess what? It's fully rebindable. That's right. Everything is rebindable. The only thing here is on combat, there's a melee light attack attack heavy attack and range lay attack and heavy attack i'm planning to put these all together as one left click and one right click or just lay attacks and heavy attacks but at the current moment this is what it is but you can absolutely rebind all of this for example i just click here and just make a g and now it says g is bound i can put it back and you can see the history if i rebind something i can go ahead and reset it and when i click reset here in the bottom right you can actually reset just the move up just the entire controls tab or i can reset everything you have an option to just reset the entire thing only a section only what you selected etc so it's great and beyond that we also have the audio which allows you to select your audio output what the volume is and different sections of audio ambient effects music and ui i think current moment you can hear and there's nothing going on in the ui right now the music is in the game the effects are kind of the abilities of enemies and ambient is kind of footsteps birds chirping things are just that exist they're not an effect or an ability they're kind of just ambience but that's this entire options menu there's a ton of stuff here and this is primarily what i've been focusing on getting this all in the other thing here we have here is the credits you can at any point go into the credits you can even speed them up if i press enter i am of course the creator of this masterpiece definitely a masterpiece you can speed up the credits there's nothing much here it's just a placeholder don't really need many credits right now as i am the only one working on it but with that out of the 
way, I do have some more stuff. If you go ahead and click new game, there's a loading screen with a temporary tip. You can see here's my green health bar that I set up. And yes, I can indeed go press escape, go to options and then change my health bar to let's say yellow, hit apply and immediately my health bar will be updated. So here it is. It's a brand new save and you can see here are all the cards. Here's my deck all populated by default. I have nothing here filled in 10 of 10 cards, all the same as we did before. I can swap these cards around, remove, etc. But you start with the deck by default. You do not have any active items selected by default, as you can see in the bottom left corner, but you do have one of the pickups here selected by default, which is this one here, which is, of course, the ones from the progression shop, as you know here. The main thing that I've also been working on in here, you might notice something a little bit different. New level, new design. We're trying out. I kind of like this aesthetic and how things are done with this, so maybe it'll be something along this. I'm just trying things out. That's why we had blockouts at the beginning. Then we went to kind of a big buildings and where you have to cut things out. Visually, there's some some trees and stuff in the way they're not being cut out yet but we're getting to kind of the look that i'm trying to achieve i'm still figuring it all out now i will be using a controller from now on for this part because it is a little bit better and there are still some hiccups with the mouse so just a heads up but let's go and explore this area and we can go ahead and make progress hit them all grab everything and you can see down below the actual experience we're getting it here come the enemies now i have changed some things about the enemies which depending on on where they are in the world they might not necessarily come after you immediately um it seems like in this area they're having a hard time realizing that they need to go through the uh, this area here so that's something i need to address but you can see there's ones over there behind the pillar and they're not actually coming after us i've made it so they no longer will just aggro on you based on distance it is now actually taking into consideration kind of where it is that they are and how long it would take to get to me for example right this one never got to me he never went up because for him, even though I was relatively close, it would still take too long to get to me. Get to kind of would need to go around and that would not be kind of good. And here's the one below. Things are in general around the same as they were before, which is just, hey, kill enough enemies, get enough uh, mobs down below killed and then you should be good now there might be a uh, way too many mobs to kill kind of in this first area because you can see the amount of actual experience you're getting is relatively low but you can see this is kind of the area and you can see there you go i went ahead and went in front of the pillar and it has not cut out so things like this are obviously was still need to be worked on i'm considering just changing it so these do cannot rotate in such a way that it will block the way and yes the key binds are different now by the way since before Four, but they're now fully rebindable so if you like the previous version over the current one you can rebind everything for controller as well as here uh, i love the uh even the blood splatter here there is um it shouldn't be kind of stretching like it is now that is something i'm willing to adjust but again very early on also one other thing that i have not put in here yet is the ability to actually get the meta progression items in this first level so just a heads up but you can see yeah you need to kill quite a lot of enemies probably need to adjust that and that's mostly to do with the fact that I've only have two levels here and both of these levels actually require you to kill a lot of enemies in each quote unquote room. So that's why it ends up being quite a lot uh, that you need to kill. But that's basically what we have here. Uh, other than that, if I go ahead and hit start, right, we have a new, the same pause options as before. You can also do low game, continue, a quick reload. Quick reload just loads the same game. If you hit load game, you could see there's the game. Right now it's just a test. I'll of course change the name and make it so you can create an actual safe slot down the line. It tells you the version, the time you saved it, how much you've been playing the game, all the good stuff. You can even delete the save file. Quick reload just get, lets you reload it. Now, there is no save here. That's because the game saves automatically at certain areas. I'm going to be adding a little like saving icon somewhere on the screen that says, hey, if you see this, it is saving, don't close. Kind of like other games do as well. But if you ever reload, you'll actually load back in the hub with whatever you've picked up in terms of currency since the last save so in my case right i have nothing so i don't get any kind of information here none of these items or anything are are there but if i for example i have the red pickup in the bottom left corner and i go ahead and pick something else up it has saved this and so if i do a quick reload you'll see i still have that orange item same thing if i go ahead and pick up one of the active items it has automatically saved it if, if i do a reload immediately so the game does save quite a bit in terms of the dungeon it saves pretty much 
cash when you die or when you complete everything. Although I believe it actually saves right now between when you enter the boss rooms as well. That is something I'm going to be changing to be at the end or on death. So if you were to reload kind of midway through a run, you would just wipe the run. Aside from this, I have also finished up the last boss we were working on last time, Morthar the Rhythm Killer. He has some cool new mechanics that are hopefully bug proof, but probably there are some bugs probably still with him that I have not been able to find. The one that happened last time while I was recording the video that you saw in the last devlog, I have not been able to replicate except for once. It happened once and then I, I just can't replicate it. So if you get to him and you experience it yourself, let me know. <laughs> uh, but that is kind of the major changes since last time. I'm going to be changing a few more options, menu things and customizing. And I really want to get into adding some more effects and things of that nature for the next month. If you'd like to try out this very, very early version for yourself, it's going to be available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. If you'd like to join the community, link to the Discord will be down below as always. And if you're looking for something else to watch, check out this video right over here. I think it might be right up your alley.